At this moment in time, I have great pleasure in calling to the stage Andrew Bradley, who is the current president of Designers Ireland, IDI. Uh, Andrew, to the stage. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, Chair. And um, if you just indulge me for a minute, it was very interesting to hear Lynn uh, talk. Um, I set out in 1991 to be a design management consultant. It was nearly 23 years ago. God, what was I thinking? Anyway, uh, I had this vision that I didn't, I, I trained as an industrial designer, but I had this vision that I was much more interested in helping companies manage design and my, my limited talents that I had would be better applied in, in that uh, sector. And um, it was a hard sell. And, but I twigged that after maybe about a year and a half, two years, that actually what I could sell was brand. Because brand starts with understanding what is this business about? Yes, it goes on into personality and into our values. And fundamentally, I used to say to companies, you know, let's have the row early on. Before we get near design, let's have the row early on. And I'm still doing that today. So I still regard myself at heart, you know, a design management consultant, but I package it up as a brand consultant because I can sell that. I'm, I'm not free, unlike your own, own services. And um, I think that there's a, a lesson in that, that it's difficult for our profession to make it tangible at times to the people who buy our services. And I had to jump to their side of the fence to try and understand uh, how best to position my, my services. The second bit of indulgence I wanted just to say that it's quite fitting we're in this room today. Uh, a couple of years back, um, the IDI had a, one of our annual events, it's the William H. Walsh Lecture. And William H. Walsh was a gentleman who was the vision behind Kilkenny Design Workshops, uh, which was started in, in the 70s. And we had, are there any graphic designers in the room? Any product designers who are one graphic designer? Okay. Any product designers who are want to be graphic designers? Are you one of you? No, no. Well, we had um, the designer of the meta typeface, uh, Eric Spiegelman. I'd be interested to see if you can get that right on the screen. Um, and Eric uh, spoke here. Eric was the guy who basically set about to design the, what he could believe was the most universal design typeface, moving on from Helvetica to create a font, the meta font, the meta family of fonts, which are still very popular today. The Economist particularly uh, uses meta font. And he articulated how he went about designing a typeface that could be celebrated by all. So it's just it's a coincidence that, that we're here today uh, doing that. Um, I just wanted to share some thoughts with you before I, I think I'm handing out a prize, is that correct? So some, uh, some thoughts, you know, Creativity is arguably one of Ireland's greatest cultural assets. Um, and I believe today it's becoming an economic asset and a real economic point of difference for this country. Yes, for generations we have been known to be creative. Uh, our reputation for music, for literature, is well documented and the world has celebrated it time and time again. But today, as we redefine our country and redefine our industries, I believe our economic future will depend on our ability to maximize our creative talents. And as Jer mentioned, next year, uh, the government has, in their wisdom, uh, announced that 2015 will be the year of Irish design which is an initiative of the Design and Crafts Council. And essentially, the agenda is about sustaining and promoting jobs. And those of you who follow political issues will know the government launched, I guess, three or four months ago, a program for jobs. And in that, uh, the year of design sits, albeit a rather small part of it, but it's, it's there. And 
I think it is about time we stood up and said, yes, not only can design enhance our environment, improve the quality of our life, but actually it's a raison d'etre, a methodology to grow jobs, to grow, to grow companies. And I think it's setting the design community a real challenge to be stand up and be counted. Um, and I include myself and the Institute in, in that. And uh, because we are coming of age as a profession, design is everywhere, and it's really important that we as a community can stand up and be counted. The actual program is under development. It will have a local agenda, an international agenda, um, but fundamentally it will be about trying to demonstrate how design can make things better. I'm relatively new to understanding the work of the Centre for Excellence Universal Design. Um, what I've seen very quickly is that it is valuable work to us all. For designers who are practicing today, it makes them stop and think, uh, you know, is my work as inclusive as it can be? For the public, it highlights the need uh, to design for everyone, every member of our society, and making sure everybody's needs are catered for. So rather than constrain creative talents, universal design can actually celebrate creativity for us all. I think there is an initial perception that it might be seen as a sort of a straitjacket, but actually I see it as a celebration. You know, as designers, we're inherently all problem solvers. That is in our, our DNA. We love nothing more than a meaty brief setting out the challenge. But broadening the scope of that challenge uh, outside of our normal domain, um, I think it's something designers will take in their stride. So finally, a bit of plug about the Institute of Designers, uh, the IDI. We are a community of designers across all different disciplines. Uh, we don't stigmatize between one discipline and another. We recognize that designers sharing thoughts, sharing experiences, whether it's product design, interior design, interface design, web design, uh, textile design, we have a lot to learn from each other. Because actually, uh, most of our clients just buy design. They don't segment it down the way we were trained and educated. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how universal design and the center can be a catalyst to break some of the barriers down between the silos in education at the moment uh, um, in, in next year and the future. So I'm delighted to be able to present this award, the People's Choice Award. Do I get given a, an envelope? You were also the chair. Oh, I beg your pardon. You were the chair of the People's Award. You were with yes. Alan on looking at the documents. So uh, drum roll, do, 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 do. Uh, we will have now got uh, the People's Choice Award, which is going to be presented by the President uh, IDI. And, uh, Am I allowed to open it, Jim? You are now allowed to open it. So the People's Choice Award goes to Christopher Wallace, 2020. <laughs> Um, this is the, the perfect end to my last day of my bachelor's degree. Uh, this, is, this is brilliant. Thank you. Um, uh, I'd really like to thank uh, Bernard Timmons, who, uh, who was the man who, uh, who really helped me out with this. Um, and hopefully we can really take it further. And I'd like to thank the uh, NDA and the Center for Excellence of Design, because it's really exciting to see uh, universal design in the spotlight. It's, it's great. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Man. Great stuff. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for them kind words, Andrew. And look forward to lots of collaboration in 2015. And now, I'm not sure who's in control here. I'm going to press 
Uh, yes, we have, yes, Sean McNulty, uh, Chair of the Judging Jury. Uh, I now call you to the stage. Um, are you going to say a few words or are you going to announce? Yeah, um, great. Um, thank you and good evening. And uh, thank you, Ger. And uh, as you referred to me earlier, and I have to refer back to you as Simon, um, I think what I have to say, it's not all about me, it's actually all about us in Universal Design and I think it's worth reiterating the quality of the jury and what we just went through. We had Neve from Intel, Bernie from Head of Innovation in Intertrade Ireland, uh, Eddie Cummins, Director in Circa and Ali, uh, I'm going to call her Chief Architect because she is in my mind of Dublin City Council. And the issue here is we very quickly went out but we actually had a lot of information and a lot of criteria. So this is done on commercial viability, it's done on the quality of the presentations, and also on fundamentally the key principles of universal design. And to me, that's really about creating great design. It costs no more than doing bad design, and that's really fundamentally the key issue tonight. It's about the thought process of how to build in uh, outcomes that deliver on the user needs, and that's simply it. Um, Without further ado, or will I, uh, do you would like me to kind of proceed with our presentation? But what we actually did is we discussed each of the submissions tonight, seven of them. Each of the judges actually made their comment and we actually have scored each of them as well. And at the end, we have one winner. And that is, I'm happy to say, Christopher Wallace. Stand over there and get a photograph. Hold on. The reason and some of the insights behind Christopher's design was really the fact, first of all, I liked his hook. Um, he had met somebody and he had discovered um, a chance encounter, a need. And what was really interesting about that was the whole emotional approach he took to it. So he looked at the emotional value of the whole product, of the whole experience, and the values of it. Because we've got to remember, and it came out in very recently there in the Harvard Business Review, we are biological creatures that feel. Then nanoseconds, we think. We're not logical people that then feel. We're biological creatures that feel. So the experience, a good experience, a good tactile experience, a response means that we have to look at things in a new light. So we need a mindset change in how we look at everyday products, whatever they are, and take a whole new approach to reinventing those so we build in the values of universal design. And that's very much what we saw very much in Christopher's uh, process that he went through. And uh, as one of our colleagues, Neve, was saying, this is something she would expect to see and buy in Humans in New York. It's an older fashionistic shop. Ger, you'd know that pretty well, like me. I do TK Maxx, so I don't go as much to New York. But it was intuitive, and it really was exploring that kind of emotional values and that experience value, which is really where we should be all kind of challenging and trying to bring universal design into play. So well done, Christopher, a great job. Okay, uh, thank you so much again, and Mr. McNulty, thank you very much for your kind words, because uh, really what you've said is, is exactly what was on my mind, and um, I'm glad it communicated. Uh, so thank you so much again to everybody. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sean. Thank you very much, Sean, and thank you very much, Jury.